Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline for Pixie Dust PhD. Today we are continuing on in the Disney Vacation Club Home Resort Fast Facts series and we will be covering the Beach Club Villas. These are arguably some of the most popular Disney Vacation Club Villa rooms, so whether you're looking to stay on your own points, rent points, or pay that cash rate, I'll have all the need to know information. Stay tuned! Before we get started, I would just like to extend a big thanks to you, the viewer. Whether you are a new viewer or a returning viewer and subscriber, I really appreciate that you're here. If you find this information helpful, please give the video a thumbs up to like it as well as consider subscribing to the channel. Ring that bell icon for notifications for whenever I post new videos. And if you're looking for more information about Disney Vacation Club Home Resorts, I have an entire playlist of this Fast Facts series. I'll leave a link in the description below, or you can go ahead and click the card in the right hand corner. With that out of the way, let's talk about Beach Club Villas. This resort is not a standalone Disney Vacation Club Resort. It is a resort in the Crescent Lake area adjacent to the Beach Club Resort. Note though that the building that contains all of the Disney Vacation Club Villas is its own building and it is set back away from the lake when you compare it to the Beach Club Resort itself. Going with the theme of the Beach Club, you have beautiful gardens, cast iron lampposts, pastel pillars, and subdued lighting that really set the mood. This resort and the villas evoke the sand, surf, and that old-fashioned Atlantic Beach getaway feel. The Beach Club Villas open in 2002 and are the fourth Disney Vacation Club home resort property located at Walt Disney World. Although this is one of the older Disney Vacation Club resorts, its popularity has stood up to the test of time and you can see that reflected in the cost. The initial purchase price directly from Disney is $235 per point. On the resale market, you'll find contracts for around $140 to $150 per point, but of course it varies with how large or small of a contract you're looking for. Annual dues from 2019 to 2021 have been ranked fifth each year from least to most expensive for those Disney Vacation Club home resorts located at Walt Disney World. When comparing to other home resorts at Walt Disney World, this puts these annual dues about the middle of the pack. In 2020, annual dues were about $7.06 per point. For 2021, annual dues are around $7.44 per point. For reference of the Walt Disney World Disney Vacation Club home resorts, the lowest annual dues for 2021 is located at the Grand Floridian and those are around $6.82 per point. In contrast, the most expensive dues are at the Riviera and those are around $8.38 per point. Annual dues at the Beach Club are not incredibly expensive by any means, but I also would not consider them a steal. The thing about dues is, of course, your total amount of dues scales with how many points you buy. Per the 2021 points charts, the cheapest week-long stay you'll find at Beach Club Villas will run you about 100 points. This is for a studio in the least expensive DVC season. The most expensive week-long stay in a studio at the Beach Club will run you 191 points. For a one-bedroom, the range of points you'll be paying in 2021 is from 192 points to 367 points for a week-long stay. And for a week in a two-bedroom, your range is going to be 266 points to 482 points. Generally speaking, Beach Club Villas are a tad on the higher end of number of points required to stay. Usually, pending availability, of course, resorts like Old Key West, Animal Kingdom, Boardwalk, and Saratoga Springs are going to cost you less points to stay in the same size accommodation during the same Disney Vacation Club season. Copper Creek and Bay Lake Tower tend to be about the same amount of points required to stay as the Beach Club. This leaves only the Polynesia, the Grand Floridian, and the Riviera Resort as tending to cost more points than Beach Club. Overall, I would say you would need a slightly higher than average amount of points in order to stay at the Beach Club. These Beach Club Villa contracts expire in 2042, which currently is the earliest possible expiration date. While you still have more than 20 years to make good use of that contract, it certainly offers a lot less use in terms of years overall compared to some of the other resorts. The entirety of the Beach Club Villas is contained in a single building that has villas spread out across five floors. There are between 208 and 282 rooms that can be occupied at a single time. This consists of 36 dedicated studios, 20 dedicated one-bedrooms, 78 dedicated two-bedrooms, and 74 lock-offs. There are zero three-bedroom grand villa accommodations at the Beach Club. This also means that if you are set on staying in three-bedroom accommodations in the Crescent Lake area, then Boardwalk is your only option. And even the Boardwalk Resort only has seven total grand villas. Depending on which type of room you want to book, inventory is definitely something to consider when thinking about a home resort. All rooms at the Beach Club Villas are in a single view category, and given the location of the building itself, you really don't have a lot of different types of views to choose from within that view category. The building is situated kind of between parking lots, small roads, and canals. There are some rooms that face the pool, if that's a view that you would prefer, but then you may also suffer from slightly higher traffic noise due to the parking lot and the roads. Rooms facing the southeast may provide you with a more scenic woodsy type view and may be the most insulated from that traffic noise. Specifically, these are rooms that end in the numbers 25 to 51, and to avoid the hustle and the bustle of the first floor, I would always advise you ask to stay on the second or higher floor. Note that even if mobility is a concern and you may prefer the first floor, there are two elevators in this relatively small building, so they won't be too far from your room. 
From the top floor, if you have a room that faces Epcot or Hollywood Studios, you may be able to catch glimpses of the very tops of the fireworks from a nighttime spectacular. But there is a reason that all rooms are contained within this single view category and there isn't a separate theme park view category, for example. This is simply because you are not going to have unobstructed views of a theme park or a nighttime spectacular or similar. You are always, of course, welcome to put in a room request, but within the Beach Club Villas, there's really not a big difference in my opinion. Beach Club Studios sleep up to five people with a clean bed, a pull-out sofa, and the pull-down single-size bed. Studios are around 356 square feet, which is pretty average size for studios at Walt Disney World. One-bedroom accommodations come in around 719 square feet and sleep up to four people, so unlike the studios, they do not have that extra single pull-down bed. Two bedrooms at the Beach Club sleep up to eight people and are around 1,075 square feet. By pure ranking, a lot of these rooms come in on the smaller end, ranking fourth or fifth smallest in their category for those Disney Vacation Club home resorts at Walt Disney World. However, as we've discussed in other videos, there are a cluster of resorts that offer very similarly sized rooms. We're talking a spread of maybe 10 square feet or so. Beach Club is certainly one of these, so I think in general you'll find that the rooms feel fairly average size, even if by pure rank they are in the small side. As far as room quirks, there really aren't a ton worth mentioning. The bed in the studios does only have one nightstand, so one person is going to have to be fine with their phone being far away from them or leaving it on the floor. The one bedroom accommodations feature that split bathroom layout, so you do have two separate sinks, although there is only one toilet. But it is nice to have two separate areas for folks to get ready in. The two bedrooms feature that same split bathroom plus another full bathroom that actually has a double sink, so there are four sinks located in the two bedroom villas. Again, though, there are only two toilets, but it is nice to have that extra counter space as well as sinks for hand washing, teeth brushing, and similar. A nice perk is that all of the villa sizes do have a sink that either has a decent amount of counter space or shelves below it for storage. You'll have plenty of space for your toiletries in the bathrooms at the Beach Club. Balcony sizes in the rooms do vary and in somewhat of a random way. By random, I mean I can't confidently say if you pick an odd numbered room, you'll get a larger size balcony. That's not how it works. I believe that the balconies were sized based on outside aesthetics. So when you're looking at the exterior of the building, that's sort of how the balconies were laid out. I saw someone post on a forum that balcony size at the Beach Club was like opening a mystery pin pack and you just will never know what you get. If you want to put a lot of work into requesting a room with the biggest balcony, you certainly can look up individual rooms on the internet, but generally speaking, there's not a discernible pattern that I can give you to make sure that you would have a larger size balcony. Beach Club Villa rooms were last renovated in 2016 and are due for a soft goods refurbishment in around 2022. Since those 2016 renovations, the feel of the room has become pretty subjective in my opinion. Some people really love them, some people really don't. I find the updates to be nice and modern, but I readily admit that the rooms lost a lot of charm and theming. You get a slight sense of the Beach Club vibe from the color choice, but other than that, they're pretty nondescript Disney rooms. For example, I don't think they feel that different from the Boardwalk rooms. If you showed me a picture of Beach Club and Boardwalk and I had no context, I really would not be able to place one over the other at the Beach Club versus at the Boardwalk. Both resorts post their most recent renovations feature rooms that are modern and I would say have slight Disney touches but really aren't heavily themed anymore. The single pull-down bed in the Beach Club Studios does feature a really cute mural or backsplash. It is Donald Duck sort of laying around at the beach. That is the most theming though in my opinion that pegs this as a Beach Club Villas room specifically. Overall, post-renovation, I do think it's fair to say we lost some theming, but the rooms feel significantly less dated now, at least in my opinion. And last about the rooms and the building itself, if you are in a studio and want to use that laundry, it will be in the fourth floor villa wing, sort of near room 414. Moving on to transportation. To get to the Animal Kingdom or Magic Kingdom using the free Disney provided transportation, you will be taking a bus. Bus service is often shared with the Yacht Club and also sometimes shared with the Boardwalk. Previously, buses were also occasionally shared with the Swan and Dolphin Hotels. The Swan and Dolphin Hotels are actually Marriott owned hotels located on Disney World property in that Crescent Lake area. Recently, the Swan and Dolphin Hotel stopped being part of the official Disney bus loop. I'm unaware if this is a permanent change or not. If so, then obviously you will not be sharing a bus with the Swan and Dolphin guests anymore. However, it is possible that this is a temporary change, and if the Swan and Dolphin does rejoin the official Disney bus loop, then buses may again be shared with all of those Crescent Lake area hotels. To access Epcot or Hollywood Studios, you can walk or take a boat. Beach Club is significantly closer to Epcot than Hollywood Studios. You are essentially just steps away from the International Gateway at Epcot. I'd put it anywhere from five to 10 minutes, depending on your pace. If you're a fast walker and depending on where your room is located, you may even be able to get there in less than five minutes. Walking to Hollywood Studios is probably going to clock in around 20 to 30 minutes. And if you really want, you could actually walk to Epcot and hop on the Skyliner in order to make your way down to Hollywood Studios. If there is a big convention going on during your stay, then you may have some difficulties with self-parking. However, generally reports of self-parking at the Beach Club have been totally fine. 
There's a parking lot directly behind the Beach Club Villas building, so you won't be parking right outside of your villa, but you will be parking fairly close. This parking lot setup is consistent with the other Disney Vacation Club resorts that are contained in a single building. The pool is a huge draw to Beach Club Villas. Storm Along Bay is arguably the most popular pool on all of Walt Disney World Resort property. It's a three acre complex that sits along Crescent Bay and you do share it with the resort guests from the Beach Club Resort as well as the Yacht Club Resort. The Storm Along Bay pool features zero entry and a sandy bottom and there's also even a lazy river that you can inner tube around. There's a large shipwreck on the outside of the pool that contains the 230 foot water slide and there's even an elevated tanning deck. When I say it's a pool complex, I really mean it's a full complex. If you want something a little more relaxed, there are also three leisure pools you have access to between the Yacht Club, the Beach Club, and the Beach Club Villas. You have the Tidal Pool at the Beach Club, the Admiral Pool at the Yacht Club, and the Dunes Cove Pool at the Beach Club Villas. All pools feature whirlpools, and there is a specific kids area over at Stormalong Bay, including a miniature water slide. Aside from pools, there is plenty of recreation offered. There are watercraft rentals on Crescent Lake, a jogging path, bike rentals, tennis courts, beach volleyball, arcade, fitness center, and more. As is typical for DVC resorts that are not standalone resorts, your dining options are shared with the nearby resorts, that is the Yacht and Beach Club. Dining options in the Yacht and Beach Club resorts are just a quick walk away from the Beach Club Villas building itself, maybe just five minutes or so. The Beach Club Marketplace is a quick service open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is also where you'll find grab-and-go type items. The Beach Club Marketplace also functions as the general store with sundries, groceries, souvenirs, and more. The main pool bar is Hurricane Hannah's. This is a quick service and bar service location open from around lunch through late dinner. This offers pretty typical pool bar food and snacks as well as some fun themed drinks. Beaches and Cream is a 50s themed table service open for lunch and dinner. This location is probably best known for its delectable desserts, including those fun ice cream treats, but they also have some pretty substantial American fare for food as well. Cape May Cafe is a table service offered at breakfast and dinner. At breakfast, this is a character meal that typically features Minnie, Goofy, Donald, and Daisy in their beach attire. For dinner, Cape May Cafe transforms into an all-you-care-to-eat clam bake. There's lots of seafood as well as non-seafood offerings, but one of the things many folks highlight is the all-you-care-to-eat snow crab legs. For a non-character meal, this can be considered a little bit of an expensive dinner, but it is all-you-care-to-eat and there is some pretty great seafood offerings. If you're a seafood fan, you can definitely get your money's worth here. Ale & Compass is a table service restaurant located in the Yacht Club that's open for breakfast and dinner. There's also an attached lounge open from lunch through late night that offers bar service, so things like appetizers and drinks. Nearby, you'll find the market at Ale & Compass. This offers quick service and grab-and-go options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yachtsman Steakhouse is a signature table service dining experience open for dinner that of course focuses on steak. Cruise Cup is the attached lounge, which is great for grabbing drinks and lighter bites. Usually you can also order some substantial entrees at Cruise Cup, but it's not going to be the full Yachtsman Steakhouse menu. If you enjoy lounges, your other option is Martha's Vineyard. This is open from lunch through late night and offers appetizers and drinks. For those refillable mugs, you'll have plenty of options. Pending the time of day, you'll be able to refill at Beaches and Cream, Hurricane Hannah's, the Market at Ale and Compass, and the Beach Club Marketplace. Those are your need-to-know fast fact items about the Beach Club Villas. Despite the somewhat soon expiration date and somewhat high overall cost, this remains an incredibly popular Disney Vacation Club resort. If you're dead set on staying here, and especially during any times where Epcot is especially popular, like opening weeks of any of the main festivals such as food and wine, I would highly consider buying a home resort contract here so you get that priority 11 month booking window. What are your thoughts about the Beach Club Villas? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me either in the comments down below here on YouTube, or you can find me on other social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter at PixieDustPhD. I don't have any insider information by any means, but I will always try to help you out and get you a useful answer. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.